You've been lied to. Most safes aren't actually safes. They are security cabinets. Yes, even your gun safe. In this video, we're gonna go over some safe misconceptions and what I recommend for safeguarding your precious metals. Coming up. Hey everyone, welcome to Campbell's Coins. For the sake of this topic, it's designed around protecting precious metals, but can easily extend to cash, jewelry, watches, or anything small and collectible. I should also mention, I am not a security expert, but I've done a lot to safeguard my wealth, and these are some things that I've learned in my research and implementation. A little over two years ago, I did a video over some tips and tricks to protect and secure your precious metals. I go into a plethora of items like cameras, alarms, hiding places, dogs, home defense, etc., etc. I don't like doing repetitive videos, so this video will primarily focus on safes and why your wealth might not be as protected as you think. Before we deep dive into the discussion on safes and what is right for you, we have to talk philosophy. I should say philosophies, as there are many in this discussion. The first is be your own bank. I don't like storing my wealth in banks. Don't trust big banks or small banks. Banks are Ponzi schemes run by morons. When I give them my cash to put into my savings or checking account, it becomes the bank's money. They own it. Look at your contract with your bank. I've talked about this before, so I'm not going to rehash it here, but it's one of the driving forces for this discussion, and it needs to be mentioned. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. We've seen numerous examples of this with people over just the last two years. Kanye West recently ran into this problem last month when Adidas cut off his sponsorship. He lost access to his Apple Pay. I'm sure he's looking into tangible assets so he doesn't run into this situation again. When you take into account business hours, weekends, holidays, and events that could shut down the economy, you'll come to the conclusion you really don't have access to your cash. What are your options then? You can withdraw your cash, but you'll run into problems there. More than likely, they'll ask you to make an appointment to come back another day, to pick up your cash. They will ask you a bunch of invasive questions regarding why you want to withdraw your money, none of which are their business, and you have every right to tell them to get bent. I don't need you to fight my battles for me, Moose. Get bent. Well, maybe be a little bit more diplomatic about it. But then what? Cash is susceptible to theft, damage, not to mention since the Federal Reserve began in 1913, your dollar is worth 97% less than it was 109 years ago. If you insist on holding a large amount of cash but worry about theft and damage, you could write a cashier's check out to yourself. This way, if it's damaged, the bank can replace it. This option doesn't get rid of the primary problem, and that is dealing with the bank. You're still at their mercy on when you can get your cash, and you can only access it when the bank is open. This is why I espouse to be your own bank. What other tangible assets can you use that won't depreciate in value like the dollar? My channel is dedicated to helping people understand the power behind precious metals and the freedom gold, silver, and even platinum can give one. Owning precious metals has inherent risks too. They might not be as susceptible to damage as cash, but equally vulnerable when it comes to theft. I understand that people have various issues and concerns when it comes to holding physical precious metals like gold and silver, but I feel that there are many ways to mitigate these risks. A simple way to start is with the locks and doors to your home. You'd be surprised how a quality lock and sturdy door can help discourage would-be thieves. Since my first philosophy is to be your own bank, my second philosophy for this topic is layers. Think of your security like an onion, a very obscure and concealed onion. How many layers are between your wealth and the outside world? What are you showing the world? Regardless of social media presence, people are literal networks, and sharing certain information with someone may eventually reach the wrong ears. What does your social media look like? Are you listed as private? Are you posting what you own? Are you sharing when you're on vacation? I think you can see where I'm going here. You want obscure and boundaries in your layers of security, and this extends far beyond social media. There are a few places in your home I would avoid storing anything of value, regardless if it's in a safe or not. Your bedroom, your bedroom closets, and any home office. These areas of the home are tossed first in a home burglary. Again, I'm not a security expert, but this is what I've heard from friends in law enforcement. My level of security covers many philosophies. I don't store the bulk of my precious metals in my home, 
and I have them separated in multiple locations. The driving idea is that age-old saying, don't store all your eggs in one basket. I understand this isn't feasible for everyone, but you can hide in multiple locations around your home. Thieves can get through all your defenses given enough time and putting all your wealth in one spot makes it really easy for them. The use of decoys is a great option. Give them a decoy safe with limited valuables. Don't make it too obvious, but make them work for it. I understand it's not convenient or feasible for everyone to spread out your stack. Most people don't have the option to hide their metals across multiple properties. If you fall in this camp, you'll have to get creative in splitting up your metals. Securing your wealth in your home can be a bunch of things that aren't necessarily secure, but so well hidden it makes them impossible to find and default makes them secure. I have security alarms, cameras, dogs, and various things to make people reconsider their life choices. If you plan on storing precious metals in your home, I would get similar layers, spread out your stack, and be aware that if your home is broken into while you're there, these criminals can try to leverage access to your metals by threatening various members of your household. The same can be said for cash and jewelry. The name of the game is to be smart and keep your mouth shut. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. The topic on security is massive and is a series of videos all on itself. It can't be covered fully in this small segment of this video. If you're worried about storing things within your home, you're able to buy precious metals and store them in private vaults designed for holding precious metals. But I don't advocate for these vaults as they are typically located in major cities and can be far from where you live. There are also logistical and security concerns with vault services. If you need your metals immediately, are you able to access them? How far away is this vault service from where you live? I have heard that the delivery times from these private vaults can vary with time depending on demand. In the last few months, I've heard that some have an ETA of a few weeks. A few weeks can feel like an eternity when it's your metals. Is this vault service susceptible to theft? Theft occurs from villains and the government alike. A prime example of this happening is the FBI raiding a private vault service in Beverly Hills last year. The feds didn't go after just their intended target and said they fooled the judge and confiscated everyone's cash, jewelry, and bullion stored at this location. $86 million in value was taken with all intention on keeping it. What's ironic with having metal stored in a private vault and then taking delivery to your house is you still need to find a way to protect them at your home. I think we've had enough foreplay in this video. We can narrow down which safe is best. As I hinted at the intro of this video, not all safes are created equally. And a safe doesn't mean that all risks are eliminated. I'll explain in a minute. When looking at safes, there are many things to evaluate, but the number one thing to look at on your list, at a minimum, you should be purchasing a safe with a TL15 or TL30 rating. These are not cheap. A small TL-15 safe typically goes for around $3,000. TL stands for tool resistant, and the number after refers to how long these safes are guaranteed to take a professional safe cracker to break in. Why would you want one of these safes versus a gun safe or a safe purchased from Walmart? Most safes are falsely advertised as safes, but can only be categorized as a security cabinet. Companies correctly label their safes on the inside of the door as security cabinets, but they tell you it's a safe. Even safes costing up to $8,000 could have this simple security cabinet rating. This ad on Craigslist is for an $8,000 American security safe, and it's really nice, but it's nothing more than a heavy fire rated security cabinet. An angle grinder and an 18 inch pry bar can peel these safes open like a can of tuna and no time at all. Bolting them into the concrete is good and it can prevent leverage, but they still have a very thin shell of steel around them. Have you seen those gun YouTube channels firing a variety of calibers at the front door of their safe, eventually arriving at the 50 cal, which busts through? The door has a plate of steel usually around a quarter inch thick, enough to stop most rounds. The body of these safes is often eight, 10, or 12 gauge steel, all the way up to 32 gauge. The higher in gauge, the thinner the steel. A 12 gauge steel body is less than an eighth of an inch thick. A three gauge steel is still under a quarter inch. Brute force and common tools can open these safes by most thieves. 
Safe companies try to trick you with marketing gimmicks and see like, look how strong our safes are. It takes this long to go through the front door. Okay, well, what about the back of the safe? And speaking of the front door, we have to look at the construction. Most regular safes have a generous space between the door and the walls of the safe. Small, but not small enough for a crowbar. The TL rated safes have significantly less space between the door and the walls of the safe, making it extremely hard to get a strong crowbar in there. The body of a TL safe is significantly thicker than your common safe too. I think they start out at half inch steel body and some are filled with special concrete mixture in between the steel designed to dull blades and drill bits. The TL safes are typically fire resistant for two hours, but vary with manufacturers. The TL safe is not impossible to break into, but it requires a more refined criminal. What you're buying with these TL rated safes is time. Speed is of the essence to thieves. They don't know who's returning or when, and they will look for the obvious. Are you giving them the opportunity to readily available stuff, or are you obscuring your wealth? A TL rated safe is also one of the few safes insurance companies will insure. Most home insurance companies won't insure your precious metals if they are in your home or in that firearm safe. But if you have them in one of these TL rated safes and they are bolted down, they will insure them for $250,000. You can get up to a half million in coverage if you have the security system and the safe is bolted down. Check with your insurance company to see what their policy is because this will vary from company to company and it will depend on the TL safe model. You pay a little more for some peace of mind all while storing precious metals near you and in your control. As I mentioned, these types of safes are not cheap. A TL-15 safe of this size is easily over $12,000, but one can get a small TL-30 times six, which means all six sides of the safe have a rating of TL-30 for around $5,000. Yes, it's still very pricey, but I like that extra layer of security. There are higher rated burglary safes available, but your starting point should be the TL-15. What are your options if the TL-15 is still out of your price range? I would not discount secondhand safes. I recently picked up a behemoth of a TL-15 safe for $1,000 on Craigslist. Deals can be had. If you go the secondhand safe route, please do your own due diligence and buy from a reputable company. If you're buying from an individual, make sure it's a safe you can change the code to and the person you're buying from doesn't know the delivery location. You'll want a reputable company who frequently deals in secondhand safes. Most of these companies are willing to make modifications to the safe to your specifications within reason. Of course, it will cost a little bit extra, but it is there. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, if you can't afford a brand new safe, you can easily find a high rated secondhand safe on sites like Craigslist for a good price. Down in the description and comments of this video, I've included two video links to some excellent videos discussing hiding places and your basic safe construction. These are very eye-opening. There are videos out there showing how easy it is to break into the basic safe with common tools found in your garage. I highly encourage those who believe that their security cabinet is enough to check these videos out. If you own less than $10,000 in precious metals, a safe may not be the best option for you. You might find that hiding your precious metals in a box labeled Halloween decorations in the garage is better, and you can hide them in empty containers. I won't list those here, but you guys can get creative. These methods might hide your precious metals quite well, but it doesn't protect them from environmental issues like heat, maybe moisture, or fire. It takes a lot of heat to melt gold and silver and platinum, but fire can damage your metals, especially if these metals are stored in plastic. Problems arise with a lot of these options and it requires planning on your part. Accidental discovery and accidental disposal are two major ones that come to mind. You don't want your wife to throw out the old paint cans thinking it's just old paint inside. Sealing up your metals in your wall is highly concealed, but what if contractors doing work on your house uncover them? If space availability is a massive problem for you, you might want to look at only gold and platinum. Both gold and silver are dense metals, but gold is denser. It's also more valuable because it's rare. $10,000 in silver looks a lot different for storage than $10,000 in gold. 
you can store a lot of wealth in a tiny space with gold. I pointed out in one of my YouTube shorts a 100 gram gold bar versus a 100 gram silver bar, both looking roughly the same size, but the gold is two and a half times smaller. The gold bar costs around $6,000 while the silver bar is around 100. It's difficult to compete with gold when it comes to putting a lot of wealth in a small space. If you don't have a whole lot of space at your residence or you're looking for a metal that you can just grab and go with, gold might be a better option for you. I think that wraps it up. If you were looking for the best safe to protect your metals, the answer is really dependent on your budget and your stack size. The larger your stack, the more burglary resistant safe you should look at getting. I mentioned splitting up your stack. I like getting multiple secondhand TL30 safes in multiple locations. Conceal these safes in not so obvious locations with layers of security and you improve your odds greatly. Your time is your most precious asset and I appreciate you spending it here with me. Thank you all for watching. This is Campbell's Coins and that is my two cents.